With a load of iron ore, 26,000 tons more than the Edmund Fitzgerald weighed empty, 50 years ago today, that good ship and crew was a bone to be chewed when the gales of November came early. But did you know that the iron it was hauling could be considered one of the oldest fossils? Allow us to introduce you to Biff's. No, not like Biff from Back to the Future. What are you looking at, butthead? Biff is an acronym for banded iron formation, and they're one of the earliest evidences we have of life on our planet, making them a sort of trace fossil. First discovered in Michigan in 1884. Represent! Banded iron formations formed exclusively in the Precambrian Eon between 3.8 and 1.8 billion years ago, when something spectacular was going on. Earth was undergoing a major change, known as the Great Oxidation Event, in which our atmosphere became saturated with oxygen. The oxidation of that iron is actually why we have biffs to start. That's right, rust. And the only way we know of that a largely carbon dioxide atmosphere could naturally change into a largely oxygen atmosphere is by photosynthesis. That's right, that two billion year period marks the proliferation of photosynthetic microorganisms known as cyanobacteria. We know this thanks to research published in 1968 by a geologist named Preston Cloud. Cloud postulated that the ancient Precambrian oceans were extremely iron rich and that iron acted as a sort of sponge for the oxygen being produced by the cyanobacteria. After oxidation, the iron would sink to the seafloor and precipitate into layers that we see as iron banding today. Even to this day, research efforts in the time since 1968 have only continued to find evidence supporting this hypothesis. Strangely, the red in these biffs isn't actually the oxidized iron itself. The iron is the darker bands in between, while the red is actually red chert. It's thought that the cyanobacteria went through blooming and dying cycles, so during blooms the iron precipitates would deposit, and in times when populations were low, the red chert would deposit. That's right, the over two billion year old iron from Minnesota Represent. that was being hauled when the fits sank are some of the oldest evidence of life on our planet from some of the oldest rocks on our continent, a trace fossil. But not all biffs are trace fossils. Some are part of actual body fossils, such as stromatolites. Stromatolites are colonial collections of microbes, which would trap minerals and sediment from their surroundings and leave behind the shape of the microbial colony when they died. Interestingly, some stromatolites still exist in extremely salinated water, like these ones from coastal Australia. Sadly, these stromatolites will not form biffs. Biffs cannot form in the modern era, or at least not to the same capacity as in the past, because modern oceans are not as iron rich as those from the Precambrian. So essentially, biffs are an extinct rock type. Just another example of how natural history influences modern culture and events. From some tiny photosynthetic organisms just trying to figure out breathing billions of years ago, we ended up with the Great Lakes region's booming iron industry and arguably the best Gordon Lightfoot song. The legend lives on from the Chippewa down of the big lake they call Gitchagumi. Superior, they said, never gets up for dead when the gales of November come early. Oh, by the way, this isn't Lake Superior. It's the Atlantic Ocean, which is like a less good version of Lake Superior. <sighs> How many times have I told you? <sighs>